In this video, we're going to look at the Sun Fun Kits Lithium Iron Phosphate Battery Kit. And this kit will produce a 280 amp hour, 12 volt battery for storage for the off grid workshop project. Sun Fun Kits is a US based company out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'll include in the description of this video links to the website for Sun Fun Kits as well as link to the kit that I'm building in this video. Sun Fun Kits offers a variety in these kits either the uh, kit itself or the kit including the lithium ion cells. If you're not interested in building the kit yourself, they offer pre-built batteries in a variety of options. They also offer just the cells themselves and these are all certified automotive grade cells. They're just a really, in my opinion, uh, it looked like to be like a very high quality kit. And I was real excited about getting in touch with him and he has sponsored this video series on the off-grid workshop build. The kit comes with everything that you see here as well as a real nice printed manual with color pictures. If you're more inclined to build off of a video, he has links in here to uh, build videos for these kits. We're going to build it. I'm going to install it in the shop and we're going to test it out. And I'm just going to go through following the manual through the steps to assemble this kit. So here's a look at one of the cells, certified automotive grade lithium iron phosphate prismatic cell, 3.3 volts, LFK 280K. They give you a serial number. You can scan this QR code and it'll take you right to the data sheet. Manufactured by Eve Energy with a capacity of 280 amp hours. This is a version 3.5. These cells are going to fit in the box like this. And then there's some very dense foam that kind of puts pressure on the cells along with these separators that will keep this all nice and tight in here. So if you are using this in a mobile application, it'll be, it'll be secure and you won't have any shorting or anything like that. Starting with this facing you, the first cell plus goes towards you and then they alternate. Looks like the green ones are one millimeter and then the blue in my kit are 1.5 millimeter. And that's the thickness of the shim. One side is flat and smooth and the other side is kind of rough. These are 3D printed. I don't know what the material is but it's pretty stout material. Put this in with the rough side up against that battery cell and then put the next cell in. And this will be the negative. So these are alternating. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Another one of the shims. Let's put the last cell in. It'll be in this direction. Negative, negative, and then a positive will go right in between. This one's important. Smooth side toward the inside where this last cell is going to fit in there. Because these are going to compress a little bit, compress that foam, and be under some pressure as you, as you fit that last cell in there. Make sure you get it in the proper polarity orientation. I've seen guys kind of struggle with this, so let's see how difficult this is. Remember, I'm using the 1.5 millimeter shims and it looks like it's going to go right in there with no problem. I may have to set it on the floor and really press that down in there. You can mix and match the shims too if you wanted to put a, a 1 millimeter shim in there to get that right, then you could do that as well. You can see how tight those are in there? They're not going to come out. Now that was a challenge. I struggled with that. What I noticed was the spacer was getting hung up on that paper label that stuck to the side of the cell. And it didn't matter if it was the smooth side or the rough side. Both sides were kind of getting hung up on that sticker and peeling it away. And then the stickiness of that sticker was causing problems with trying to get that shim in there. But a little bit of finesse and finagle and I was able to work it in there. And again, I used the one millimeter shims for this particular battery build. It's going to be plenty tight and secure for my application, just stationary on a floor. On to the next step. These particular 280 cells have about a 3 16 of an inch lip where they rest. They're just above this 
aluminum insert there. So you want that to be flush all the way across. It just set right there. That way when that plate goes on top, there's no gaps or anything and it just fits in place. When this next piece goes on there, it sits nice and flat all the way across. Okay, to install that bottom bracket, once you've got those spacers in place, it just installs with four five millimeter bolts and washers that fit right in those corners and screw down into that aluminum plate on the side of the battery box itself. So this will be the positive and the negative. Make sure when you put this plate on, it lines up just like this. So you've got the cells orientated correctly and then you've got this plate or in the proper orientation as well. So this is positive, negative. It goes to the next positive. Comes down here, negative to positive, negative to positive, and negative. So now between these two leads, once those are tightened down, we should have a 12 or 13 volt battery pack, 13.19. We need to connect the balance leads for the BMS. One's for the BMS, and then this other one for the active balancer, which is located on the bottom of this top plate here. You can see each one of these has eyelets mounted to it, already pre-cramped and pre-shrink on there. The first step is to put the uh, bus bar, then we're gonna put a washer, then the balance lead, then another washer, and then the nut on every one of these. Okay, one thing to note here when you're installing these actual wires to the positive and negative terminals, you need to make sure that this does not touch the positive post on this first cell. And the same thing falls true for the, for the positive on this side. Make sure that it doesn't touch. These are long enough to reach those other posts. You need to really be cautious and make sure that they don't. You want the flat surface of this connector right on top of the battery lug itself. So put that on first with no washers or anything. Just make sure you don't touch here. Then we're going to put a washer and then the negative from the uh, active balance lead and then the negative from the uh, BMS balance and then another washer on top of that and then a nut. Now it looks like he's provided some nylon lock nuts to go on top so that they don't work that way loose. I think I'm going to use the nuts that came with the with the balance bars and until I figure this out and then I may switch out and use these nylon lockers next. That way it can bend up here and connect to the tab on the BMS. Now you can do this a couple of ways and the way he describes it in the book is the active balancer leads will hook onto the negatives and the BMS balance leads will connect to the positives. And, and you could do it either way I think. I'm going to actually put mine both on the positives just the way I want to do it. You can do it however you like. Going over from the first black, we'll go to the first white. This is on the, the balance leads for the BMS. The first white and the green go to the first battery. So you could either connect them like this, or I'm going to put them both on the same terminal, like this. A washer on top and I did read in the instructions that the version 3.5 has the uh, nylon locking nuts to help prevent vibrating loose during uh, transport or if it's in a mobile mobile vehicle or something like that which is nice and you don't have to use thread locker on these nuts I'm gonna just use these for now just for the demo and then I'll probably go back and replace them with those nylon lock nuts that are provided. 
and then you just work your way down the line. The manual has a real good section to show you how to hook up these balance leads. Some good depictions and pictures and a uh, good explanation exactly what's going on there. I've taken some tape and just kind of organized the balance lead wires. I think this will work out pretty good just to kind of hold those in place. And then the next plate to go on is this one. It actually has the uh, heater wiring coming through it and it has the active balancer here. The way I understand it is this is for uh, high discharge and charge amperages. Now these are brand new automotive certified cells and they're perfectly balanced right now. So I'm not going to connect this particular item. I'm gonna leave it installed in the battery. Let me connect it for you just to show you. And once you plug it in, you'll have a light that comes on so you know the active balancer and the uh, associated leads for the, for the uh, cells is connected properly. After you plug in your active balancer plug, you want to put this plate on top. And then these are the heating element wires that are going to come out of the end underneath. Then there's some channels in this plate for these heat pad wires. And then once I get this screwed in place, I'm gonna just put some captain tape over the top of those. So when I put the lid on, it doesn't affect these wires. This plate will go on with three Allen head screws, one, two, and three across the back. Now these back three screws do not have washers. They're countersunk so that that top plate can fit flush across the top here after you tape these wires down. Next is to mount the BMS battery management system plate. And this is the SFK Sunfun Kits 200 amp, which is a beefy, beefy uh, battery management system. Real big aluminum heat sink on the back side. And this one has the uh, heater, Bluetooth and two temperature probes. So just make sure your wires are tucked out of the way and it fits right on top of this. And that recess allows for those heater pad wires to not get smashed underneath this plate. On the top side of the battery is the short screws because they go right into the brass inserts. And the bottom side, they have to go through this middle plate so that'll be the two longer screws. Here's the difference of the long ones and the short ones. So long ones on the bottom. Short ones on the top. Then next on the B minus and C minus, B minus, this lead is going to come underneath here and bolt right to the BMS with the supplied stainless steel bolt and lock, nylon lock nut. And then make sure that your heater wires for the heat pads and the balance lead for the BMS comes out on this side so you can plug it right in here. Don't plug it in yet. We'll hook these heater leads up. And they're going to go underneath the Phillips head screw and connect right here to the BMS. Now this is really a tricky part here. When you connect this lead here, this is the negative. So you don't want these two touching each other. The larger hole goes to the lid. The smaller hole goes to the BMS. All right, I told you wrong earlier about these heat pad leads. One is black and one is yellow. The black one connects and it has a smaller hole in the eyelet. That connects to the BMS, and the one with the larger hole in the yellow is going to go on top. So make sure you understand that. I told you, I told you wrong earlier. 
Next, I gotta find a place to secure this Bluetooth module. Or I could go right there. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, right there. I'm gonna take one of these temperature probes Bring it down here and tape it to one of the cells. And the other one I'm going to tape it right here. Last thing is just to hook up these, these two leads to the lid. Now there's two options. You've got this short cap screw. Or you can put a long bolt all the way through and then that'll be sticking out. Depending on how you're going to set it up, I'm going to go with the short low profile option using these cap screws. Heater wire that's going to go on top of that lug just like this. Just do a test fit here. And then finally, we can plug in the balance leads to the BMS right here. Thirteen point one eight. Excellent. I had a lot of fun building the kit. Sunfun Kits also offers an AC to DC charger that I'll be using in a later video to charge this battery to its full capacity. Something to note for people who are new to the lithium ion, through my research I've determined there's really only two kinds of battery cells out there. Certified automotive grade, which I've mentioned several times in this video, and that's what SunFun Kit sells. And then there's everything else. They're a lesser grade cell that maybe hasn't met all the requirements. Doesn't mean that they're bad cells, but they're sold at a cheaper price. The certified automotive grade meet the highest standards. They're gonna give you a good solid quality battery that's gonna balance well, and they should provide their specified amp hour ratings. Click the link on the screen for the next video in the Off-Grid Workshop Build Series, and we'll see you over there.